feeling? I'm feeling seasick. I actually threw up, like. <laughs> really? Yeah. We are sailing into this massive squall line. Such a nerve wracking feeling. Sailing straight into this wall of lightning. If I were to be able to have a conversation with Desiree from five years ago, I'd be really impressed with myself. <laughs> Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough money to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Recently, after a terrifying five-day sail through pirate-infested waters, we finally made it to the island of Providencia. But now it's time to say goodbye to this hidden gem and continue our journey south. Well, today was a super busy day. basically ready to go. So, how are you feeling? I still don't wanna go. It's yeah. so pretty. You know, just looking around this anchorage, it's been so like perfect and like, yeah. breezy and yeah, I think it's my favorite place we've been to so far since we started cruising. Maybe even ever. Yeah. <laughs> One of those places where you walk into a store and everyone says good morning. Yeah. And I feel like that's hard to find, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I just, I love it here. Yeah. By Providencia. Yeah. All right. Let's pack her up and get ready for tomorrow. Just like looking at something so beautiful and we're leaving it. I know, I it feel kind of, yeah. I guess when I first started thinking about cruising, what was appealing to me was uh, just like constantly moving and seeing as much as possible. Um, but I've learned that moving a lot is actually um, a little bit overstimulating sometimes and it's hard to actually get the feeling of a place. So as we've cruised more, I've really enjoyed kind of finding places that immediately speak to me and then kind of spending as much time as we can there and then just doing the little things that make life enjoyable like yoga in the morning or sunset hikes. I think this would have been a place that I could have spent a long time getting to know. So we are saying goodbye to Providencia. Our destination is Bocas del Toro, Panama, which is about 240 nautical miles to the south. So it's gonna take us, you know, more or less 48 hours. It might take us a little bit longer because the winds are forecasted to die. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling good. Yeah? I'm feeling seasick. So weird. I know, it's really weird. Like, I haven't felt this way, gosh, in a long time. Mm -hmm. I actually threw up, like. <laughs> really? Yeah. Did it just come out of nowhere? Well, I checked my phone. Uh, I was looking at Navionics, and as I was measuring it on Navionics, it was just like, just came upon me, and I was just like, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, we get a lot of recommendations on ways to 
like avoid seasickness as if it's avoidable. My biggest thing is just to recognize you're not dying <laughs> and like you're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And like even if you throw up, it's okay, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so that, I feel that way like every time I get up to like do a horizon scan, mm -hmm. like I feel bad, mm -hmm. but I'm just like, whatever, like <laughs> you'll be okay, you know? <laughs> And in a way, it's sort of empowering because it makes you a stronger person. You know what I mean? Like, just your ability to put up with discomfort. Maybe I'm pretty strong. I think, yeah, I think you've got such great constitution. Because <laughs> I'm pretty much always seasick. Yeah, because you either have a headache or you're seasick or you're sleepy. <laughs> your life is an uphill battle, buddy. One big struggle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We are booking it right now. We're going, we've been going six knots pretty much my whole watch, um, which has been awesome. And because the seas have finally calmed down a little bit, I'm actually building up a little bit of an appetite. So I'm gonna head down below and uh, grab one of my little pre-made meals. Ow, ow, ow. better um, as you can see the sun is setting and I'm basically no longer seasick so that's good and it's nice uh, the seas have calmed down even more than they were earlier and uh, you know we're broad reaching still probably 14 knots of wind and uh, it's a really nice evening It's just after nine o'clock at night. I just woke Desiree up because I'm seeing some lightning uh, off in the distance ahead of us. And I've been watching it for a while and it's starting to get a little bit close. It's real breezy, so you know we're booking it. We're doing like six and a half, even seven knots. But with this lightning coming up, I wanna get this Genoa down and uh, get the working jib up just so that it'll be that much easier to douse a head sail if we do end up sailing into a squall here. that's ahead of us and looks like we're getting closer to it or maybe that it's kind of growing because before it was kind of like a lightning haze in the distance um, but now it looks like it's kind of a little bit more pervasive so I've just been watching it like constantly and uh, made me think when we were doing a live stream with Lynn Party I asked her, you know, what was the scariest moment she had uh, while underway in all of her years of cruising and circumnavigating twice with her husband. And um, she was saying that the scariest moments are actually anticipating um, what could possibly happen or anticipating what that uh, lightning in the distance could do. <laughs> And she said, you know, once she's actually in it, it's less scary because it's not this mystery. And, you know, she just gets to work and they can kind of problem solve together and handle it. So, uh, it's kind of how I feel right now. I'm just like watching this lightning in the distance and we're just like slowly going towards it. <laughs> and hopefully it dissipates or we get through it quickly. Because I just hate this, the anticipation. Bed. Would you mind coming up and taking a look? It looks like, I don't know, this lightning is getting, it seems like it's getting stronger. Okay. Yeah, wind's definitely picked up. From what I can see, those clouds are still pretty far off. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, we're going straight for them. So, I mean, it's not like we shouldn't be concerned, but... You think I should 
put another reef in the main? It, I think. What's our speed, seven? Yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt just because we are we are going pretty darn fast. The reefing, once shit gets crazy, it's going to be a lot more stressful than just I, I agree, now. I agree. So, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Well, after double reefing the main, um, the motion of the boat was a lot more uh, pleasant and kind of less intimidating. Um, now we're getting a little bit closer to, <laughs> to the lightning, and uh, I can tell that the wind's picking up. <sighs> Gosh. <laughs> One more night, <laughs> and then we'll be in Panama. Just gotta remember the finish line. This is a nice anchorage, a nice cozy anchorage. Desiree went down below, I took over, and we are still sailing into this massive squall line. It's like such a nerve-wracking feeling, just sailing straight into this wall of lightning. It doesn't look like something that we can avoid, we've just got to get through it. But the crazy part is, is it's still hard to tell how far away it is. And so, it's like, are we gonna hit it in 10 minutes? Or is it gonna be another two or three hours? <laughs> like, it's very, very hard for me to tell. It's very nerve wracking. Well, good morning. The good news is that, uh, <laughs> I can't believe it but the lightning dissipated before we got to that squall line. But it is pouring down rain, <laughs> just absolutely dumping. So I'm hiding here under the hard top, got the little sunshade extension out, trying to stay a little dry, and it's not really working. Ugh, that was like probably the worst watch I've had so far on Atticus. Before I could set up this extension or like do anything, it was like it started to rain and I like got up and then I felt sick. So I like got the bucket and I'm just like getting poured on. And I'm just like, <laughs> Like it was one of the most depressing moments of my life. Yeah. You know? But we've only got, only got 108 miles to go. So we're gonna get there real early. Cool. Like we'll get there at first light, basically. Nice. So that's good. So I feel bad for Jordan. He had a crappy watch. I think I'm gonna give him extra time to sleep. Um, Cause I'm feeling pretty good. It's crazy because. Ever since we bought Atticus, we've been wanting more than anything to get to the Panama Canal and then cross the Pacific. It's just this, I don't know, kind of like rite of passage, I feel like, for sailors. And I kind of forgot that we're actually getting to where we set out to go. And uh, I think if I were to be able to have a conversation with Desiree from five years ago, I'd be really impressed with myself. <laughs> so yeah, we've both come a long way. Uh, in our relationship, in our trust in Atticus, in our personal ability to deal with difficult, uncomfortable situations. I'm digging this moment to just be here and be present and appreciate how far we've come. And uh, yeah, I'm proud of us. starting to rain and it looks like that cloud is coming a little bit forward of us so I think it's gonna get wet <laughs> uh, well it's calmed down a lot over the last probably hour or two you look a lot better now bud uh, that was like <laughs> intense yeah it <laughs> was like an intense sleep yeah I feel a lot better. Good. 
Well, it's time for me to go hoe the field. Yeah. And milk Betsy. Good. Is that what you call it? Jordan up so we can get ready to head into Bogus del Toro. Hey bud. Yeah. 5.45. Two nautical miles away. It was a pretty uneventful night except for the fact that we were approaching land and so on the horizon there's all there were all kinds of lights so I was just with binoculars looking at the coastline making sure we weren't going to be running into some kind of vessel. Anyways right now it looks like there's no traffic up ahead. So, should be smooth sailing. Morning. Morning. Man, you can smell land. Yeah, I know. Like an hour ago, I was like, what is that? <laughs> I wonder what that smell is, you know? To me, it smells like, like wet dirt. Yeah, it does. This smells kind of sweet. Yeah, it does smell sweet. Like a bakery. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> uh -huh. Man, it's so pretty with all the mountains in the background. Well, as we're entering in this channel, you can kind of feel the cool ocean breeze <laughs> kind of dissipate back there. It's getting a little bit more muggy as we go more inland. I'm just really enjoying this, you know? It's really pretty. There's mountains in the distance. Like we said, you can smell that like leaves on the ground kind of smell. It's not hot. <laughs> I'm happy that we made it to Panama. Do you want the throw up bucket? I don't want the throw up bucket. Yeah, there's some sort of concrete dock that's right next to the port captain's office and customs and immigration and everything. So. Um, I think we're just gonna tie up there. You think I should brush my teeth for the poor captain or just go all not to raw? We should probably try to brush our teeth. Yeah. yeah. It's been a couple days. You haven't brushed your teeth once? No, I wasn't about to go in the bathroom and get my toothbrush. That's gross, bud. <laughs> Wanna make out? You should brush your teeth more often. Uh -huh. So this concrete dock looks a lot shadier than we thought. So we're just gonna kind of nose up to it and see how it looks. It took Desiree a while to get on top of this concrete dock because it was tall and super shady. But even once she got to the top, Desiree had a hard time finding the port captain and he wasn't gonna be in for an hour. And the swell was making it a little bit dangerous for Atticus to stay at this dock. So we decided to take off for the marina and figure out how to check in from there. My favorite part of every passage. Let's shut her down. walked towards the marina office to go check in, we ran into our good friend Alex from Tangaroa, who we had spent a lot of time with cruising the south coast of Cuba. Good to see you. Good to see you guys too. Yeah. Can I get 
Hi, Tanya. Good to meet Welcome you. Welcome to Bocas. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. We had a question. We just went up to the concrete dock to check in. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, how do we check in here? I think the best idea is I'm going to call the, the Port Authority and okay. they come here. All right, looks like all the officials are here. Time to do the old document run around. All right, well, it is time for a shower. I cannot wait. It's been a long time. So nice. to a barbecue at the Bocas uh, Marina. So yeah, we're just really enjoying this marina and really enjoying getting to meet new people and hang out with Alex again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, you guys just rolled up eight o'clock. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Well, I ordered the chicken and rib combo yeah. and uh, some good old onion rings. Man, I'm, I'm very excited. And like I'm blown away, like it's a big social gathering and like basically all the seats that are left are reserved. So like even more people are coming. It looks pretty fun. Hey bud. Time and time again, we find ourselves in challenging and difficult situations when sailing offshore. But we've learned that if we can just hold out, push through to the other side, that the reward is always worth the struggle. And each time that we face our fears, and each time that we accept the discomfort, we become just a little bit stronger. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking here. And if you're already a huge fan of Project Atticus, consider becoming a patron right there. See you next week.